Describing the city of Casa Grande is, is not a simple task. It's really a, a tight-knit community. The cost of living and our quality of life is good here. We're not in the hustle and bustle, but we're close enough. So Casa Grande is located in the central part of Pinal County, kind of in between Tucson and, and uh, Metro Phoenix. It's a great community that is really booming and growing economically, at creating jobs, creating housing. Pinal County is technically, according to the Arizona Department of Water, out of water. We will be out of water in 100 years. So they're not issuing any more certificates of assured water. You can't develop if you don't have a certificate of assured water. It will become a problem when we use up all the lots that have certificates today. Now that's going to take us a little while, but we don't want to wait till we're out of lots and then try and figure out, you know, how are we going to get more water. Water is life in the desert. Without it, we, we don't grow. Without it, we may not be here in 50 years. Water is it's critical to our housing development. It's critical to our industry uh, development. It's critical to the quality of life for our community. Most cities, either they have their own water system or they, or they work with a, a private utility. In our case, we have a private utility in Arizona Water Company. We've actually come up with a water resource plan for the city of Casa Grande with, in cooperation with Arizona Water Company. They've been a huge partner in this. Casa Grande has three different water supplies uh, that we rely on here. One being groundwater, and that's what we've relied on to date. We import water off the Colorado River, the Central Arizona Project, and the city of Casa Grande also has a wastewater facility that creates some of the highest quality effluent you can produce from a wastewater facility. We are dependent on groundwater for the most part, and we have large irrigation districts that are using a lot of our Colorado River water in the past, but that supply is going away for them, and they'll be using more groundwater. We can't use groundwater forever. I would challenge people to look at your water resource portfolio kind of the way you would your own finances in your home. So you might think of our Colorado River water entitlements, what we call our CAP water, as a renewable supply. That might be our Social Security or our pension. Our reclaimed water would be a supply like that that we can use every year and it keeps just coming in like a monthly paycheck. And that's really what we want to live on. And you can look at your groundwater more as your savings account. And you don't want to use your groundwater on a regular basis. What we're really trying to do is reduce groundwater use, get it to the point of where it's balanced, and then all the growth that we have in the future would be on renewable supplies. What we're trying to do is create less water use for each person we have here. So that by doing that, we can actually add more people without having to necessarily use more water. We just passed our 2030 general plan update and it actually has a water component in it. And what a general plan is, is how you use your land. Water conservation is all part of how we want to use that land. It's not a matter of you develop a land use plan and then you bolt on the water component and say, okay, well, how do we get here? The land use plan was developed around the water resources side. There's a lot of community input that goes into this, into our general plan. It has to go to a vote. And we had about 85% approval on our last election. Our goal is a 15% reduction in water use. And we're starting with the city because we're the biggest user. And so we're going to really challenge the city to show by example, you know, how we can reduce our water use by 15%. We have, in my supervision, over 30 different facilities. Those range from a work yard to a full-blown park to baseball fields to dog parks, all kinds of different parks. In the last couple of years, we, we actually have already started uh, some conservation methods, and those are turf reductions in areas that weren't highly utilized, like a fire station doesn't really need turf because the public isn't there using it. Turf reduction is, is actually removing the turf and replacing it with desert landscaping. We've reduced at the Dorothy Powell Senior Center, um, at City Hall, and at some fire stations. We were looking to stretch our budget, our water budget, and we knew that we were gonna have a little bit more water use at Car McNatt Park. Car McNatt Park was a facility that the city wanted us to focus on. They wanted us to kind of dial into the water usage and see where the potential for savings is. Car McNatt Park was remodeled in 2019, and it has several main features that we wanted to bring to the community. First is the city's first ever splash pad. The splash pad is connected with a very large shaded playground. In the afternoons, you'll have literally hundreds of kids using that area. So a very nice family oriented area. 
We're developing tools and resources to determine if the water being used at a property was appropriate, where potential for savings were, if we were to implement something specifically, what savings would that provide, um, and then something to kind of help track progress. We're able to measure out square footage of turf, desert landscape, water features very, very thoroughly, and then put it in the tool, and it, using historical data, it projects how much water is required for that facility. There could be turf reduction in certain key areas. There also could be changes in nozzling or changes in water practices or changes in amount of irrigation. We're going to look at the gamut of everything that we can do to efficiently use water the best we can. How does a community grow and conserve water at the same time? Definitely a challenge, but it can be done. You know, as a community, we need to cut 15%. Let's figure out how we're going to do that. We've established a new program called Save It, which is our conservation program. It's, it's a whole integrated you know, marketing plan. We use social media, standard marketing, magazines, newspaper. So every month we're pushing a different message, whether it be drip irrigation best practices, preparing people's landscapes and irrigation systems for the summer. We're trying to push out unique, relevant, and topical information. Everything we do is branded through the Save It program. We want to build a conservation ethic in this community, and we want people to be proud. And every time they see that symbol on it, they have a t-shirt with that symbol on it, we want them to be proud that they're a part of a community that is not only water efficient, but is planning for its future, and we're all gonna to work together to make that happen. All this water conservation helps us with our economic development. It helps us with our community. It helps us with making our community a better place to live. It also helps protect our water supply and the long-term you know, water that, you know, for our kids and our grandkids. You know, we need to make sure you're looking to the future. When I'm not here, you know, there's still going to be a water need. I want to make sure that our children, grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren have the same opportunities as we do and that we ultimately are responsible in how we use our resources. So we're looking to make an impact in the future and, and hopefully what we do today will be felt by generations to come.